you're a person. You got eyeballs. You already know what's up. All right. Don't think about it too much. These people are so up in their own heads that they're almost like crazy people. It's bullshit. What I'm going to do is read a passage about Duchamp. You heard a little bit about him with like the, the large glass. I'm going to read a, a passage from this book about Duchamp. And then I'm going to read a passage from the big fat book about Duchamp. With some knowledge of the rich iconography of Duchamp's large glass, properly titled The Bride Strip Bare by Her Bachelors, even, yields another reading. It should be emphasized that this is indeed a reading since it's largely, largely based on Deschamps' notes. Turning to the glass, uh, at the left of their lower domain, a huddle of diagrammatized bachelors attempt to excite the bride with her orgasmic blossoming in the upper domain. When I say it weird like that, that means there's uh, quotes around it. Apart from triggering her stripping, the bachelor's communal arousal produces love gasoline, which, once refined in the receptacles to which they are hooked up, is dazzled into the bride's orbit via a set of optical devices, the oculus witnesses in the lower right hand of the glass. Most of the droplets of love gasoline fall sadly short of their target in an area designated as that of the shots. This short description evokes something of the glass's bleak hilarity while a satire on sexual relations, but from it the significance of wayward landscape can be appreciated as one of the uh, Bachelor slash Duchamp shots. As a comment on the male expressive slash sexual urgency, the gesture ironizes the new vogue for painterly bravado in uh, American art linked assertively to male artists such as Pollard surely to embark upon his drip paintings. Remember the key. Don't wear your pretty little head. It's all bullshit. All right, let's find the shop in this bitch. Here is what this book has to say about that same piece of art, large glass. The large glass is an insoluble enigma and was intended to be so. It is an illusion of an illusion, and all the more disorienting because the changing real world on the other side of the glass forms part of it, as well as the viewer who is occasionally caught in its reflectivity. It can be deciphered only in the most general terms. In the upper half of the bride, a fusion of mechanical and biological functions that Duchamp had evolved separately in an oil painting of 1912 is shown undressing while she both attracts and repulses her suitors who are, whose orgasmic frustrations are indicated diagrammatically in the bottom half. Is it simply a joke? A complicated and meaningless visual puzzle? When questioned about it, Duchamp once said that there is no solution because there is no problem. Whatever its meaning may be, and it has inspired the most varied and abstruse of interpretations, ranging from Hindu mysticism to medieval alchemy to a bunch of horseshit word salad like the other book. It has been enormously influential. For painters and artists of every kind, it has become a talisman. They have recognized it in the most fully committed and radical opposition to a purely visual conception of art. It asserts the value of the work of art as a sign, as a machine for producing meanings, and for compelling the active contemplation and creative participation of the viewer. Duchamp was quite explicit about this. It was not his intention, he said, to make a painting for the eyes. He wanted to put painting once again at the service of the mind. If his work was dubbed literary and intellectual, that wouldn't bother him, he said. This is a quote. The term literature has a very vague meaning. And in fact, until the last hundred years, all painting had been literary or religious. It had all been at the service of the mind. This quality was only lost during the 19th century, culminating in Impressionism and Cubism. Dada had been for him, he went on, an extreme protest against such purely visual attitudes to painting. Okay, that sounds like a different guy, doesn't it? That's coherent to me, I can understand that.
Now there is hope, okay? You graphic designers out there may be remembering sort of a different type of history of the 20th century art. You might have been thinking of arts and crafts and also Nouveau, which is like, I think there's, you have yeah, 1880s and stuff, arts and crafts, 1890s, Art Nouveau, right? These are more illustrative, they're typographical, they're, they're flat graphic um, mass printing. We got Art Deco, um, which is a kind of triumphal, cool style. If you watch like, if you watch Batman the Animated Series as a kid, like many of us did, that is sort of a, that's an Art Deco aesthetic that the, the city is drawn in. The movie Metropolis, Deco. Okay. Okay, let's check this out. Okay. What do you think about this stuff? This, this looks interesting, right? There's lots of communism involved in all this shit, too, unfortunately, but, hey, you know. People of their times. Bauhaus. Deconstruction. Does this look ugly to you? Check this out. Now, I two basic criterions, criteria, whatever, for good art. Right, like I said earlier, craftsmanship and aesthetic. It's that's not very rigorous of a standard, do you think? These qualify for me. Okay, we're not getting into some fucking it's cult symbolism. Alright, I'm not doing that. Uh, but I know that shit exists. I'm flipping through this book and I'm like, oh shit, this is interesting. Here's one look at this Hitler one. It's Hitler, but he's got like his trachea is a bunch of coins. I forgot the narrative on that, but it's worth looking at. Even the Soviet shit, it's, it's, it's we, have, we were, like, there's a lot of influence, Soviet influence. This shit is creepy, though, but it's well done, you know? You look fucking, look at Comrade Lenin. Weird motherfucker. Alien-ass looking motherfucker. So, why wasn't any of this in uh, the other book? Well... Because most of this shit is considered passe. You see, this is done for publications. It was print. It was illustration. Because, you know, the real fine artists, they're so pure. They gotta be just pure. I'm just doing this shit, man, in my garage. And it's, it's but ugly, and I'm a disturbed individual. You know the story, man. Look at this stuff. Look at this. You think any of the motherfuckers we've been discussing can do this? They're hacks. It's a fucking scam, dude. It's so goddamn complicated, too. There's some Japanese stuff. These are interesting images. Letter marks. Word marks. Typographical experimentation. Detail. Maybe a little autism. Look at how this, this typeface works. Alright, look, I, you might not find this stuff interesting. I, I, I do a lot of graphic design. I just wanted to draw pictures, though. But, um, I respect the shit out of this. Alright, here's some. Look, check this out. Spider-Man movie. I think it's part two. It's great, dude. It's, it's beautiful, it's interesting. But it's uh, commercial. Okay, here's the guy Macintosh. This was um, Art Nouveau. Glasgow style. Now, there's weird shit in here too. I mean, you know, the later it gets in the 20th century, the more even sort of corrupted this shit becomes. Oh shit. Like, look at that. Do we need to see Cyclops? Like, what the fuck is going on with this guy's crotch and stuff? And this, and it starts getting a little, little creepy. The point being, it's all bullshit, guys.
You want to see some? Here, let's cleanse the palate. Come here, Michelangelo. Just basically open it to anything in here. Man, dude. Can anybody do this now? Will anybody pay for someone to do this now? It's passe. Ah, who gives a fuck? No, we, we don't need to see beautiful, beautiful things. We don't need to see idealized forms. And, you know, I mean, like, to even uh, quote Duchamp there, he's like, look, up until the 19th century when all this weird shit started, uh, this is what I think he was saying. All the weird shit started happening in the 19th century, and it did start with Impressionism. There was a, uh, in Paris, there, like Monet, Manet. They they would have <laughs> they would have riots at their exhibitions. Riots, Impressionism, which is like fucking milk toast by by the cool by the cool uh, post-war period where these guys fucking know everything now. It's the end of history and shit. Look at this. So what what is this direction? What does this mean? Well, what do you think? I don't even think I, a picture is worth a thousand words, man. There's a reason why they call it the High Renaissance. It's amazing. But but after a while, you know, we had you know Romanticism, um, Neoclassicism, like all the cathedrals in Europe. I mean, jeez, dude, look at this. You got shit. You don't do this anymore. Amazing. It's amazing, dude. It's beautiful. It's great. Yeah. Look at these capitals. Alright. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I think you guys get the point. There's a lot of different ways of looking at society. And it's trajectory. Uh, I just wanted to talk about this one because I think it's not um, known, you know, it's, and, and it's no wonder why, right? I mean, I'm like feeling my spirits lift just looking at some Michelangelo or like some of this dope ass uh, design from uh, from last century. And the other stuff, how does that make you feel, dude? Hmm? Reading that weird word salad shit? Just want to present you guys with some data. Tell me what you think of this weird setup I got here. The weird mask. Uh, that was my music, my own music playing in the background. And uh, I'd love to talk to you guys about all things art, music, literature, poetry. Because that's what I like to do. All right, y'all. Stay safe. And don't be a bitch. Peace.